Okay, so you know, sometimes when someone hands you some sort of uh, algebraic equation or a function or something, stuff with symbols in it, you want to know when is that thing defined? When does it make sense? For example, if it were a fraction and there were x's in the bottom, whatever, any value of x that would make the bottom equal to 0, those are values where you know the whole thing's not defined. Now, with square roots, you know that you can't take a square root of a negative number. So anytime you can get a negative under a square root, you know the thing is not defined. So here's an example to sort of illustrate this sort of circle of questions. Suppose I tell you that y is equal to the square root of x squared minus 16. And the question is, I want to know for which values of x is this whole thing defined? Okay? Now, you may remember this is called the domain. So the domain is just the collection of x's which make this thing defined, which means when I, when I say make this thing defined, what I mean is the collection of x's that I can plug in here for which this thing would really be a number. For example, is the value 0 in the domain? Let's think about it. Am I allowed to have x equal 0? Well, if x were 0, look what would happen. That would go away, and I'd be taking the square root of negative 16. Ouch. Can't do that. It's not a real number. So in fact, 0 is definitely not going to be in the domain or in the domain of this, this function. So uh, how would I find the domain of this function? Well, since all I see is a square root, I know the only principle here at stake is that the thing under the square root, also known as the radicand, who cares? That thing has to be positive. So you see that if I ask you to find the domain of this function, it actually converts to an inequality. The inequality which says, OK, the domain is all the values for which this inequality holds. Namely, x squared minus 16 is bigger than or equal to 0. You see? Otherwise, if this is negative, I can't take the square root. So even though the question asked about find the domain of this, of this expression, really it converts to a question of solving an inequality. Well, now we're back home where, uh, where we know what we're doing here a little bit. I want to try to factor. It's a quadratic. So I have x, and it's a difference of two perfect squares, so it's great. It's x plus 4, x minus 4. And what do I do now? I'm going to find out where this thing equals 0 and use that as sort of the endpoints of a, of a sign chart. So I'm going to make a sign chart right now, right in front of you live. So let's see, where does this thing vanish? What values of x make this equal to 0? Well, since I have a product of two things that, that combine to give 0, either this is 0 or that is 0. If this is 0, x plus 4 equals 0, that means x had to be negative 4. So I have a negative 4. I'll mark that here. If this term is 0, x minus 4 equals 0, that means that x has to be 4. So there's two values, negative 4 and 4. And I'll write 0 here to indicate that this thing is 0 at that point. And in fact, if you want, you might want to put up those firewalls, firewalls just to really drive home the fact that this breaks up these zeros or if there were denominators, where the denominator equals 0, where it's undefined, break up the real line into, in this case, three pieces. And whatever the sign of this thing is at any point in here, it will remain that same sign throughout this whole region, similarly here and similarly here. Why again? Well, suppose that at this point, this thing were to be negative. But then right over here, at this point, it was positive. Well, how do you go from a negative to a positive? Somewhere, there has to be a value in there which makes this 0. So we'd have another 0. But wait, we found all the zeros. They're here. So in fact, this is all the same sign. This will be all the same sign. This will be all the same sign. So how do we find it? Just pick points. For example, let's pick a point out here, like 10. Let's plug in 10 and see what the sign of this is. I don't actually care about the actual number. I just picked 10 out of the hat. So don't worry about computing the number. If I put a 10 in here, 10 plus 4, well, it's 14. But all I care about is its sign. It's positive. If I put a 10 in here, 10 minus 4, well, that's whatever, but it's positive. So it's positive times positive. That's positive. So this whole region is a positive region. This is where all the people that see the world with rosy glasses live. Positive. Now what about here? Between minus 4 and 4, I've got to pick a point. How about just 0? That's in there. It's pretty easy to see. If I put in a 0 for x, this is just 4. If I put in a 0 for x here, that's minus 4. Positive times a negative is a negative. So in fact, in this region, this is where the pessimists live. This is a negative region. What about here? If I pick like, you know, minus 20, 
minus 20 plus 4 is still negative, and minus 20 minus 4 is also negative. It'd be minus 24. So a negative times a negative is a positive, so the net result is a positive region. So there is my sign chart. Great. What do I want? I want to find out where these things are greater than or equal to 0. So that's off at these wings here, you see? So the solution, if I were to label it, would be all these places, the positive region, the rosy. This is a rosy kind of problem. It's a happy problem, really, is what it is, because everyone wants to be positive, positive, positive. Now, what about the endpoints? Do I want to include them or not? Well, those are places which make the thing 0. Am I allowed to equal 0? Yes, because I can have a square root with a 0 inside. That's OK. So I'm allowed to equal 0, so I'll include it here, and I'll include it here. So in fact, this is a visual answer. This is a graphical answer of the, uh, of the question, what's the domain? Any point in here. But notice if I pick any point in here and plug it back in, that will make a negative under the square root, which is not allowed. So how would you write that? You could write this way. I could say, well, it's uh, all the points from negative infinity to minus 4, including minus 4, but not including infinity. In addition, all the points from 4 out to infinity. And we take either one or the other. Any of them will work. So it's the union of those. And so I use the little happy face union sign. So the question was, what's the domain of this function? What are all the allowable values of x? It turns out any uh, x that lives in, in this region, or in particular, graphically, any x that lives out in this wing or that wing. So that tells you how to find domains when you've got square roots. What you've got to do is actually set up an inequality, solve away. See you soon. <laughs>